What's up, everybody? I'm Barry with BarryIndependent.com in today for Survival Dispatch. And uh, we're out in the wet woods of eastern Oklahoma today. It's in the uh, upper 30s, lower 40s. Not too bad, but it's been pouring rain overnight. And as such, I'm surrounded by mud, wet leaf litter, and wet trees. And I'm going to show y'all where I get my fuel for my fire to make my morning coffee from. I realize this is probably not overly interesting for most of y'all, and there's literally a thousand different ways to make a fire, but perhaps you can glean some information from this that could help you when you're out in austere environments and doing the things. Now, I know many of y'all are all about the gear, so let's talk a little bit about what I'm gonna use to harvest some of this wood. This is a silky gomboy. It's got this little thing here. You can hang it on your belt if you want to. 210 centimeters, or I'm sorry, millimeters. Uh, I don't know what that is, about an eight inch blade or so. This one has been used. You can see it's missing the tooth right there and it's starting to get kind of dull, but these blades are replaceable. Go use your stuff, right? So we'll use our little folding saw and in conjunction with that, when we look at our five C's of survival, our cutting tool, right? So we've got that saw. We have here a 20 inch Holtzbrook Swedish ax, also well used. Oh look, there's a little bit of dirt on there. I can't believe you didn't sharpen and oil this ax before this video. Hey bro. I do the things, I don't talk about it. I like this ax for a lot of reasons. It's handy, it's a little 20 inch. Um, it's good for splitting small diameter wood. It's good for limbing. It has this swept cut right here that's really good. You can choke way up on it for making shavings if you need to, or for precision cuts. It takes an edge, holds an edge very well with just a simple flat bastard file. Uh, throw a little linseed oil on the handle and you're good to go see right there made in Sweden and I believe it's a one and three quarter pound head yep one and three quarter pounds comes with this nice little leather bra that you can put on there to keep the dangerous bits away from your soft soft skin so that you don't accidentally bisect your own flesh and then if you're into batoning there's a thousand different knives out there that are good to go but this one that i have with me is an ontario knife company rat 5 straight blade and the rat 5 is a good knife um, i like it a lot however the handle scales the g10 that comes on here are very bulky even when your hands are big and look like this and so I took a round chainsaw file and all of these bevels and contours you see on the handles there, I did that myself because it needed it. I like this knife a lot. Predominantly, I use this knife for butchering. It's got a good choil right here for choking up with the sweep. The curvature of this blade is great for taking an animal apart. It's got a good tip on it. So when you're caping the skin out, you can take one finger like this, apply some tension and cape skin out quite well holds an edge well and it's uh relatively affordable ontario knife company is almost like the workings man working man's se knives although i'm a big fan of se as well but i like this knife a lot and so that's what we've got for cutting tools with us today now i'll show you uh, what we're looking for we want dry stuff when everything else is wet all right, this here is almost damn near a match made in heaven. This is an eastern red cedar tree, a small one. And these needles on the end here will light and make fire even when they're wet, which is great. Now, another wonderful thing about cedar trees is about the lower third of the tree, the branches will die. But unlike pine trees, they don't drop their dead branches, they keep them. And so the canopy of the tree does a pretty good job of keeping water off of the lower limbs. And down underneath here, see those little spiky sticky things? 
that is dead dry wood. And if we can get that off of there and split it open to get to the dry wood on the inside, it'll burn. In addition to that, we have whatever this abomination is right here. Standing dead wood. You can see it's broken off at the top here. And this is some juvenile hardwood that has seen better days. Looks like the top blew out of it. And uh, there will be dry wood inside of there. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these lower cedar limbs off and we'll take this down and we'll use the cedar as our kindling to get started. And then we'll baton up or uh, smack apart with our ax some of this hardwood to get to the good dry wood that's inside of there to get our fire going to make our coffee. And in the interest of full disclosure, I've already had two cups of coffee made on the fire this morning that uh, I then decided, you know, I should probably share this with the survival dispatch people. So there are some hot coals in my fire ring already, and that's going to greatly assist in getting this fire going. But I did the same thing this morning as the sun was coming up in near darkness uh, to make my coffee, and I had no issues. Stay by. All right, let's look at the uh, center of this. Good, dry, hardwood. That's what we want to make our fire with. My dog, uh, Sam, has seen fit to join us on this little adventure. Hundred twenty pounds of Anatolian Pyrenees mix. Good dog. Good dog. All right. Now that we got our couple of rounds of this dry stuff, a couple of ways we can break this apart. First is with our little camp axe. Hit it harder next time, bear. Yeah, I'm trying not to bury the blade in the dirt. There we go. See, it's got a, it's got a natural split in it right there. That's what we want to aim for, like so. So you can obviously use your little camp axe for that, or take your knife. A baton and break pieces down like so. Dry stuff is what's going to burn. Now we got some firewood to play with. All right, you can see, still got some coals down in here from this morning's fire. And one little piece of wood that's still burning. Now I'm gonna take my cedar limbs, the little tiny stuff, and start breaking this down like so and get a whole mess of this going. There's little, little tiny ends, like so a whole mess. Break down each one of these, oh, four to six inches long. And there's 
no really right way or wrong way to do it. And then when I get to the bigger stuff like this, I'm gonna snap it and then peel back so that it exposes that center portion like that, just like that, to where it's dry on the inside. And we want a whole mess of that. Now, this is not necessarily a video on fire making technique. Again, there are a thousand ways to make a fire, and it depends a lot about how you learn and where you are and what materials you have available to you. But at this point, uh, we'd probably, if we were starting from scratch, we'd have a little tinder bundle down in there, and then an ignition source, um, whatever that might be. That could be everything from a Bic lighter to a friction fire to a trioxane tap to whatever. But in this case, we're gonna use that one hot piece of wood that's making coals down in it that we've still got. You can see it's starting to smoke. When there's smoke, there will be fire. I'm going to encourage it a little bit. Now that we've got the faintest hint of fire in here going, now we want to start taking our pieces like this that we've snapped open of our cedar, exposing the dry wood on the inside and strategically laying that in there. Not too much too fast because the wood that's on fire has only got so much energy in it. Just trying to give that energy off to whatever you're going to catch on fire next. Whatever the pieces are you put in there next and if you put too much of a load on the fire that you want to catch, if the load that you put on there exceeds the amount of energy that what's burning has to give to the load, your fire will go out. You won't get a fire. So you want to create an opportunity for that stuff to catch start giving off its energy before you pile more and more stuff on top of it. Alright, so now I'm going to start transitioning to a little bit more of a box fire. I've got a piece of dry wood laid this way, and I've got that original stick laid this way. Now I'm going to put two more in like this. So, I like the box fire because it's high surface area great for getting the fire going. Put a couple more like so and it, it breathes well. It continues to create opportunities for the wood to catch because you have to have fuel, spark, and oxygen and air in order to have a fire. And so because of the space in between the pieces as we lay them down in a box fire, it still continues to breathe well and it has a high surface area like I said. So we're exposing as much of that dry wood to the flame as possible to get it to catch. And I'm continuing to feed inside my two outer pieces of the box, my little tiny dry slivers of cedar right here. And I just felt the rain drop, so maybe we're in for some more of it. So, and I'll take two more. One. That side, put one on this side. I've got found a dry limb as well. And I'll stack that between there, like so. One more here, one more here. Hey. Let that catch but she's going now and uh, I like this fire a lot basically I start with a little teepee fire you know my tinder then my ignition source the little tiny twigs and split pieces around that and a little teepee fire then I build my box fire around the teepee once the teepee starts catching it'll feed the box fire and then once the box fire goes it's really good at getting the fire going now even when it's wet as you see it and it's also uh, really good at making coals fast. So if you needed to cook uh, 
for a long-term fire to throw a bunch of heat to keep you warm, box fire is probably not the way you want to go. But for um, making coals to cook on or for making your morning coffee, I uh, highly recommend it. Probably worth pointing out, um, as part of my little cup kit, I have a little hand towel here. Not exactly clean anymore, but it does work for wiping out the inside of your cup. It also works great as a mitt for picking up your hot metal cup, like so, so that you uh, don't burn your little paws. And this is nothing special. This is the Stanley two cup mess kit thing. And uh, I've had it in T&E testing and evaluation at our channel Fair Independent for the last couple of weeks. And it works exactly like it should. It's a metal cup that you boil water in. Now, hear that? See that? Hot water. Make coffee in the wet ones. Yep, it worked. So, that's how I make my coffee in the mornings out here in the wet, in this case, the sopping wet woods of eastern Oklahoma. As always, I'm curious about your comments down below. Uh, I'd like to know what fire methods do you use where you are. Hit us in the comments down below. If you're new to Survival Dispatch, go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the little bell icon. That'll keep you posted for when new content comes out from myself, Alan K, T Jack, uh, Jason, on three, um, and all the other content creators here at Survival Dispatch. And thank you to Survival Dispatch for allowing yet another bearded survivalist to play in your sandbox. I greatly appreciate it. And check us out at Bear Independent, uh, B-E-A-R Independent on YouTube and on Instagram, bearindependent.com. And uh, you can find us all there. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm going to drink this coffee. Bear out.